just as telecom, I mean, for us, we've, we've been about driving our data prices down quite dramatically. We really, our personal feeling, quite of the, the most affordable data yes, um, yes. provider, yeah. very much focused also on content and entertainment propositions and making it easier for people to access certain things. So um, I think we're working, we're getting there, we're going to get there as a country. Um, it's about the baby steps that we take. Podcast and chill. Matt G, the ghost lady, and Len Moleko. So, are you going to say it with me? The saying? And, uh, but me. Yeah. Okay. On the count of three. Okay. okay. One, two, three. And, but me. Welcome to ladies and gentlemen. It's another episode of Podcast and Chill. And today I have the pleasure of chilling with Wandam Kize, executive content creator, uh, executive content holder. Well, what's your title? You've got it. Nah. Spot on, spot on. Executive content and then uh, VS Gaming is also another portfolio that I look after. From Telcom. Definitely. Fantastic. How long have you, you been in this uh, job for? So I've been here for about three and a half years, an oh, exciting nice. three and a half years. Yeah. And uh, yeah, looking forward to more. And what were you doing before that? So I've always I've been in the content space for the past 10 years, uh, nice. working for SABC and looking at strategies and, and different a- aspects of content. Yeah. So this has been a nice change to get into the com- telecommunication space, but still staying within the content uh, environment. So coming from that background to now telecommunications, like you're saying, was it a shock? Like, wow, this is not how we used to do things. It's you completely know. different. Yeah. It is definitely completely different, but I think also exciting. Um, one of the things, the, the focus areas, the focus around uh, the business and, and how do we grow and how do we uh, move things uh, forward with regards to revenues and, and, and reaching the targets of where we want to go, definitely there. But I think what was exciting about it is that mix with content. We were saying, looking at a consumer quite differently. The telco looks at a consumer from an ARPU perspective. Uh, from, a, from a content perspective, you look at customers from a your audience share, how many people are watching a particular mm. program, because it's obviously very much around advertising in that type of world. So mixing those two environments together has been exciting. And uh, talk to me about your role at Telcom. What does it entail, essentially? Um, so, you know, I just came back from a very interesting session where I think in a lot of ways we underestimate what we do. So I'm really going to kind of jump at the top. We're responsible for innovation. Okay. Um, what we're, from a telecom perspective, content um, or entertainment as a holistically is really where we see the business, the, the business of the future. Um, what we currently provide with regards to access products from a broadband perspective, a smart broadband perspective, is really becoming almost moving towards a commodity. Um, And if we don't start looking at the environment and looking at the adjacencies in the environment that we are moving into and going going into the future, and innovation is one of those, and content in that innovation space is where we see the next growth path for Telcom. Wow, man, your job sounds so amazing. (laughs) It sounds so dope. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I I think I sell a good story. It is rough. (laughs) (laughs) But exciting. What does one have to study to be in your role? Um, I've done an, uh, I, I basically did a BCom in uh, economics and management um, with no intention of where I am today as being the, as, as what, how I chose it. But I found that it's also been one of those business, business degrees that kind of gives you an overall feel around where you want to be. But I guess my key focus and what I did focus on on, on my postgrad side of things is strategy. Okay. Um, I've always loved strategy. Um, I also had the fortune of working while studying. So I finished my degree while working. So I got the opportunity to start getting exposure into certain areas and then focus my studies in that regard. Oh, I see. Um, so that's been the exciting part. But uh, yeah, found it in BCom. All right, cool. Let's talk about gaming. Yeah. Uh, it's an industry that's taking the world by storm. And the nice thing about telecom is that you guys have been at the forefront since the beginning. Um, you know, how did that relationship with gaming start? So, I mean, it was 2008, and I think Telcom... 2008? 2008, wow. 12 years ago. Uh, Telcom kind of saw, we, we were at that point... Uh, I don't think I was even on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> did it exist? <laughs> <laughs> yes. the question. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we were doing a presentation about a week ago, and we were kind of doing the evolution of where we've gone. So you start off in 2008, and Telcom is introducing these data products, DSL products. Wow. And, you know, you're getting a one megabit, or no, it was 512 kilobits per second speed. It's amazing with a whole one gig of data available for you. Yeah. This is a huge product proposition. Yeah. And it just tells you where... 
they, they, the, the, the market wasn't really into or utilizing much of this data, but we already saw the insights and the opportunities with multiplayer gaming and the opportunities that, that our connectivity can provide in order to ensure and enable those those things. And a lot of ha has happened over the years, and I think the introduction of fiber has been mm. the most amazing thing for our market holistically, but also internationally, um, more and more players and cre creating those opportunities um, has, has really seen the growth of uh, gaming. Oh, e-sport. Uh, it's no secret, like, the gaming industry is far smaller in SA as opposed to other countries, you know, in Europe and China, for example. Um, but it's starting to gather pace, you know? I think it has to do with something, like you said, now fiber, perhaps. Yeah. Why else do you think that that is happening? I think we, there's, you know, with, with connectivity, with your, even, and I say fiber because it just, it's just an amazing technology with, which allows us the greater interest and the speeds and, and, and things like that. But even from a mobile perspective, there's been great inroads with regards to mobile speeds and the ability and the access that people are getting through our mobile broadband type of propositions. It's, it's that access to the bigger world so um, there's there's a lot of so as, as you spoke about the fact that internationally um, it's grown big people are touching and playing with people internationally yeah. um, and therefore that's why it's also grown in South Africa we've had teams that have actually gone and played internationally who've played in our leagues for years and and it's creating those opportunities as well as just being the world is the stage it's no longer just a South African environment it's it's much bigger than that um, I'm a gamer, like I've been a gamer all my life, and then I was like, hey, maybe I must take this thing seriously when I thought, when I saw the prize money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, whoa, that's a lot of money. Yeah, you that's know? the point, yeah. I think, I think in 2017, eFootball, you had the biggest uh, prize, prize pool. We yeah. had 1.5 million rand that we gave away. Um, uh, uh, yearly, annually, we normally give away over 3 million rand in prizes according, uh, uh, across all the games that we've put through. But definitely the FIFA championship is one of our biggest ones. And I think the nicest thing about FIFA is like everybody can participate. Yes, yes. It's not just a team or, or you that you have to put together. Yeah. But it's, and, and we also open up the doors that you can come in on the day and, and hopefully get your ticket in. Yeah. Um, so it's an amazing one. How do you come up with the prize money? Because I could Telcom, do with a million rand. Yeah. <laughs> it helps to have a big brother. <laughs> I mean, really, I think, um, to be honest, Telcom's really been committed in, 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 in ensuring that this eSport is growing and that we grow as, VS, as Telcom VS Gaming. We grow year on year. And through their commitment, they've given us both not just the prize money, but the resources that, that it takes to actually drive and, and run such activities for us. All right, cool. So we're in the space. We can see that uh, the gaming is coming. It's going to be huge. People are now being connected via fiber and all that stuff it's looking great when does vs gaming come into play so so in essence for us we we as a league We've got an annual league that we run um, where we, our registrations opened about two weeks ago now okay. where we are, everyone, please, Telcom VS Gaming. Yeah. Um, so it's vsgaming.co.za and okay. you can register and to, to play one of the games. So like you said, you've been playing for years. You found a game. You've got, you've got Dota, FIFA, CSGO, FIFA. Call of Duty. Number, Call of Duty. There's a number of different games that are available. See which one that you would like to participate in. Yeah. And then you register on the league. Oh. Throughout the course of the year, there's online games that are being played oh. where we're trying we're basically looking to find the best of the best, either from a championships or the masters. Oh, wow. So we've got a championships level, which is basically allowing people to play in up to the championship level and finding a winner in that space. And then we've got the masters, which is currently FIFA is one of our masters tournaments, as well as um, uh, Dota is one oh. of our masters tournaments. So when is the big uh, finale? So we have, so from a championships uh, perspective, we have our big league uh, running, the, the big ones running around uh, November, October, mm. November, and we have those at the Matrix um, High Performance Center in Rosebank, and um, mm. um, Ravonia, sorry. Yeah. Um, and then our Masters, we've been running at Comic Con. We've got this oh. amazing relationship with Comic Con Africa and Read yeah. Exhibition, where for the past two years we've run our Masters tourni uh, uh, um, tournaments there. Yeah. This year we've got newly launched uh, Comic Con um, Cape Town, yeah. where we're going to be at the Greenpoint Stadium, one of the World Cup uh, stadiums, and yeah. we're going to be running FIFA. Wow, so at the stadium! Amazing for us. Yes. Wow, that's insane. Stadium, so a FIFA tournament um, at the actual Greenpoint Stadium. So we're excited. We're, this is May of this year, and we're really excited about that. You know, I'm sitting here and I'm listening to all of this, and I can't believe it. I started playing FIFA from FIFA 06. Wow. <laughs> you know, and and, and to, to hear the fact that you can go to a stadium and play FIFA. Imagine. And hey? win a million rand. It's, it's actually, like, it's, it's insane. It's actually amazing. It's, it's, it's lovely. I mean, we're really excited about what it is. It's a first for us. Yeah. Um, uh, Philip Mabida, Philip. <laughs> 
Fuck. Fill up green point. <laughs> Fill up green point. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. Um, and, and with eSports, like, yeah. like you're saying, it's growing. The popularity is there. But I think just, just the idea that you actually become an eSports player, an eSports winner yeah. at an actual stadium in wow. South Africa. Okay, let's talk about Comic Con, right? Yeah. First in the country, and this year we're having two in the country, Cape Town, like you mentioned. Take me through the decision to introduce Comic Con in SA. So about two years ago, um, Telcom understood, uh, with the understanding that we need to open up eSport to a much wider audience. I think the biggest challenge that you've found in eSports since our inception in 2008 is it's a very niche market. There's very few people who see themselves as professional yes, players. Yes. And for us, we believe everybody's a gamer. And there's people like yourselves who've been playing since 2006, yeah, FIFA, yeah. but have never considered yourself as, as an a eSport player yeah, in any way. Yeah. And how do we reach you? Mm. We can't expect to, to just stay at your conventional eSport or technology expos. We wanted an opportunity to speak to the ordinary person or, or people, like-minded people who would have an interest in eSport. Yeah. And um, we then had a conversation with Reed, who was also looking at um, introducing Comic-Con into um, uh. South Africa. And the mix was just perfect. That, that, that the type of consumers and people who, who participate and come and, come and attend mm. at, a, at, a, at a, co- a type of Comic-Con type of event was different to what you have in eSport, and, but, but would, al- would have like nimedness around yeah. what we want to achieve. Yeah. So in the world, it was the first time that Comic-Con came to South Africa in 2008, and mm. we were there. Mm. In fact, this Comic Con, uh, to the uh, Comic Con Africa, is the first Comic Con around the world that actually has an esports tournament wow. in it. It's not been done anywhere else in the world, and the success that we've had locally has made the the, the, the actual owners um, read pop consider introducing esports into their Comic Con yeah. around the world because it's just been such an amazing fit, yeah. um, f- fit environment. Yeah. Was there any risk into um, introducing Comic Con in terms of like you have no background or any analytics to know if the comic book uh, phenomenon is as big in SA as in other parts of the world. You know, I think most definitely, and I think that's that's where Reed um, Reed Exhibitions has has taken the risk in understanding the market and who they they part- uh, who they work with and 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 what's happening within the South African market mm. had had seen the opportunity um, for for such an environment, and and it's been amazing to see that year on year we we're we're blown away by by the increasing success. I mean, the first Comic Con we were sold out before a week, even I think a week before the tournament itself. Uh, the, the, the festival itself started with over 40,000 people at the event. The Last year, um, we had over 70,000 people coming through to the event. We had to get a bigger venue because we're obviously too big for the previous one. Uh, and we're expecting even bigger ro- record crowds for um, this year um, again. And what's going to be different this year? So um, on our end, we are definitely introducing, from a telecom perspective, mm. uh, we introduced a new mobile league, um, a sports, so mobile gaming, and uh, on our Telcom Plus platform. And there we're basically going to be running the finals to, to our leagues that are going to be taking place. So this is the first mobile mobile gaming league in South Africa that we're going to be showcasing. So we're excited about that. Yeah. Um, and as I indicated from a Cape Town perspective, we're having FIFA at a stadium. Yeah. Uh, quite exciting opportunities <laughs> in that regard as well. Yeah. And, and, and you know what? For us, we're always looking at how do we outdo ourselves year on year. Um, we want to make sure that the, the Masters finals and the opportunities for these great teams in South Africa mm. um, get to play in the most a- amazing environment ever. And, uh, and that's what we're cha- uh, looking to, at achieving. And how easy or hard is it to uh, get into the gaming space and follow all that telecom VS gaming does you know it's not it's not difficult i think um if from a player perspective like i said our leagues are open no restrictions around joining the league yeah should you not looking at came playing a team sport and not actually have a team of players our 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 core function and and what we do is allow you and team you up with other people that you can create a team and, and play towards the final so it's not restrictive in that regard you can find a way in which to to, p- to p- participate in a team yeah um from a spectatorship point of view, we're trying to open up more avenues for, for people to view and watch uh, the digital game uh, opportunities that uh, take place. Yeah. Recording, we've also got a YouTube channel. Oh, nice. Um, uh, that, we, that we broadcast a lot of our games on and are looking at growing on that um, going forward. Fantastic. And just in closing, um, the biggest hurdles I've seen when it comes to the digital space, where there's podcasting and gaming, is accessibility. Yeah. Um, where do you see us as a country, as a continent, curbing that 
problem, if I may, for lack of a better word. Yeah, I think there's there's a number of uh, opportunities that we we can look at and explore. I know from a telecom perspective in particular, our key focus has been around uh, being the from a mobile space a key data provider on the fixed space. It's about having that network and infrastructure and creating access to to products. But it's about making sure that it becomes more accessible. Mm. And for us, we we've we've we started a new mobile. Um, sorry, a, a high schools league gaming league and some of the things that we're considering and looking at is through our social um, uh, our corporate investment and things like that um, we are partnering with different uh, schools in rural areas or putting in the t infrastructure and technology and then coming in from a gaming perspective and say hey let's look at creating a league creating opportunities now that the infrastructure sits there also looking at budding systems with different schools and seeing how those opportunities can grow we're constantly looking at ways in which we can make um, uh, make accessibility a lot bigger yeah. but just as telecom I mean for us we've, we've been about driving our data prices down quite dramatically we really our personal feeling quite of the the most affordable data yes, um, yes. provider yeah. very much focused also on content and entertainment propositions and making it easier for people to access certain things so um, I think we're working we're getting there we're going to get there as a country um, it's about the baby steps that we take Fantastic, Wanda. That's good to hear, man, because I was about to ask you, when is data falling? Data has <laughs> fallen. <laughs> <laughs> and just in a nutshell, uh, you know, uh, Telcom, uh, what's, the, what's the plan this year? What are we doing? VS Gaming, how big are we going? What can people be excited about? What's happening? Yeah, so like I said, our league opened up two, two weeks ago. We're excited. We want everyone to come through. We've got FIFA happening in May at Greenpoint Stadium. Really, really looking forward to that. We want everyone to come and join us, especially the crowds who are not able to come through to Gauteng yeah. uh, most of the time, so we're excited about that. We've got the finals that are happening at Comic-Con. We've got the high school leagues. We're mm -hmm. growing that year on year, and we've got our championships taking place. Really a wonderful opportunities. We're also looking at creating content opportunities, both within the gaming as well as just in the entertainment space. So please, watch the space. Yeah. We, there's a lot we're up to, but please, Telcom Plus, um, .co.za, also go and explore. That's our mobile league. Everyone's a gamer. There's a game for you and some money to win as well. <laughs> <laughs> and we all love money, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> Wanam Kisa, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. This has been Podcast in Chiwi Area. Boom. Podcast and chill. Matt G, the ghost lady, and Lynn Moleko.